Welcome to my opinion here on my opinion TV. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell. So as soon as a video is released, you'll be one of the first to be notified. And this afternoon, we bring into focus Montego Bay, St. James. And based on what we are hearing, is that for the last three, three days, it is reported that four persons have lost their lives. This morning alone, two lost theirs down there in Montego Bay. In the first incident, it says the first incident, a disabled juice vendor who was gone down on Montego Bay Transportation Center this morning. He has been identified as Honey Stevens, otherwise known as Mignit from Petersfield in Westmoreland. It is reported that at about 8 a.m., Stevens was selling juice inside the transportation center when he was approached by a man with whom he had an argument. The man brandished a gun and opened fire, hitting the vendor. In the other incident, it is reported that it happened in Catherine's Hall, where a man was shot several times by harm men as he tried to enter a Jamaica National Bank. It is said that that man father was murdered more than a decade ago in a similar fashion both in front of a financial institution both carrying lice and firearm it is reported that the dead man alias is papi champi it is reported that he died clutching his firearm now in this incident where his father died 10 years ago clearly it as I said, I haven't got much information, but my own theory would be this seems like it's coming from a father situation or it's a setup situation. Someone knows when this man is going to the financial institution just like they did with their father and decided to take this man out. Montego Bay is so corrupt this time that it's hard for you to look at something and pinpoint what could have caused this? Because there are so many incidents in Montego Bay. Even on Wednesday, one man was killed. And he was found in a rubbish heap. This is the extent criminals go to take out whoever they want. It doesn't matter who you are. Catherine Hall in front of a Jamaica National Bank. But based on what we are hearing still. We are hearing that the incident was caught on camera. So we only hope that the incident being caught on camera will provide much help, needed help that the police need to solve this puzzle. And we hope that the perpetrators of this crime would be caught. And clearly, if the, his father died in similar circumstances 10 years ago, if the police can hold these culprits and question them, it, there might be a solution to the death of the father too. So two family members losing their life in the space of a decade, both the same way at financial institution, both had legal firearms. It says that something just not adding up. Something just ain't right. Now, at the first incident with a disabled Jews vendor, now, we have so many able-bodied people in this world that is not interested in seeking any form of employment not interested in doing any form of entrepreneurial work but this man a disabled man a crippled man based on what we hear having his own business selling juice in the transportation center and all because of a disagreement he was taken out the only thing that raised my eyebrow in this incident this incident happened at the montego bay transport center and he's from Petersfield in Westmoreland. Just wondering if there's any track, any situation that happened in Petersfield and this man relocate to Montego Bay and his cronies or his enemies were after him. Or it could just simply be a simple disagreement and the person, because he has a firearm, decided that he's going to end the man's life. How many times have we seen this? And we hope that this busy Montego Bay Transportation Center, someone might have seen or some camera might have been around 
and caught this and that these perpetrators be caught and put away for good. Too much of this is happening and these criminals are getting away with it until the legislation is passed that will grant stiffer penalties to these men. It seems that these men are just running rampant. And the other thing, these men are so brazen, they do it any time of day. Once it was late night, early morning, criminals would go on the attack. Now, broad daylight. Broad daylight. That tells you that these men, these criminals, are more brazen than before. So if they are so brazen now, our laws should be so tough that their brazenness that they carries out, the law will be there so that when they carry out act like these, their punishment fits the brazenness of their action. These men are volatile. It doesn't seem that the prison can rehabilitate some of these men. It just it just doesn't seem that way. But, you know, sad situation. Papi Champi heading to the bank. Life snuffed out by someone who might have been following him. Or it could be an inside intelligence. It could be intelligence also. And, uh, you know, once, as I've always said, Montego Bay, the, the area a lot of persons talk about in terms of tourism is a sad place. Even though these incidents are not necessarily taking place in the ter tourism zones, but it's a sad place. It just seems like it's a never-ending war in Montego Bay. No matter how much Zozo, no matter how much state of emergency, people are still losing their lives violently in these areas. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Click the notification bell. So as soon as a video is released, you'll be one of the first to be notified. Remember, you can touch base with us on our WhatsApp group. But for now, until next time, stay safe. Look out for a loved one. Look out for a neighbor. And most of all, keep it locked on My Opinion TV.